gather with all the assets we need to speak of the hour. Pray, Father, that the things we study, Father, will be a benefit to us, Father. Pray, Father, and glorify you. Thank you, Father, for this day. Ask that you lead us. Got to learn, and grow, and bear fruit to you. That's what you do tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I want to talk about charity. In 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about it. We talked, we, we, we scaled a little bit about it early in the lesson. Uh, uh, what does this mean? 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, we're going to name it, the lesson, Charity Never Fell It. Charity Never Fell It. And so, we want to talk a little bit about it uh, this morning, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And, um, uh, this whole chapter talks about it here. And we're going to read the whole chapter. And we'll get some thoughts from here and there. And then we're going to, then the lesson's going to be ours. And then we can, you know, go ahead and enjoy the rest of the day. And look forward to hearing Kevin teach tonight. Uh, as, as we come back for a nice service and, and maybe those who didn't have a chance to come this morning can come back uh, tonight so <clears throat> verse 1 says though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity I become as sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal as a tinkling cymbal for all of us all of us uh, we have to see the importance of what he's saying here. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charities, I am become as sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal. That's pretty, pro that's pretty, that's pretty profound what he's saying. He said, because an angel, you have an angel, and then you have how they have a, a certain function in the whole realm of Christianity, he says that now they're not supposed to teach the gospel. They can't do that. He said, but they 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 have a certain function in a, in in the Christian life. And he says, if I'm one of them, if I'm an angel, and I speak with the tongues of an angel, and I have not charities, he says, I'm become I'm become as a sounding symbol of of a tinkling of brass. He says. It just makes a sound. That's all it does. He says, he says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charities, I am nothing. Now he just brings it back. He said, I am nothing. So we've got to look and see what charity is. Charity is. We looked at some things earlier. In Matthew 25, 30 and following, we looked at the, the giving of ourselves to, to one another, you know, going out and to, you know, uh, minister to uh, someone's needs. Sometimes, you know, we don't even have to look far to find out to minister to somebody because they're right up on our nose. God is saying, hey, look, that person is person's right here that you need to minister to. You know, what is it that we can do to help those that are in need? Uh, you know, we always have to... We always have to look at ourselves when it talks about loving our neighbors because when we talk about our neighbor, we look. I remember when me and my wife lived on the street in the other house, and uh, uh, the lady across the street, she passed away. And she didn't pass away, it took her away. It took her away on a the ambulance came and got her. She ended up passing away. She ended up passing away. But I always I often think back. She didn't speak a lot, you know, we didn't, we spoke, but she didn't speak a lot, you know. But I always think about, you know, what more could I have done to help this lady while she was there? Because she used to be married, and they got divorced on her husband, got divorced some kind of way, and she lived there alone. Very secluded, you know, secluded people. Her daughter was the same way when she passed, her daughter never came out the house. But, you know, you think about what you could have done, you know, who would knock on the door, say something, you know. I always try to speak to anybody, even though they just walk past you, don't say anything. I always want to know what can you do and then have that little opportunity, that little, that little door to speak to somebody about the gospel. You know, but, you know, could I have taken somebody a, a casserole? Could I took them some lunch or something? You know, just drop by and say hello or something. You know, that's charity. 
That's charity. Those are the things that 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 we can do to help um, somebody in need. Somebody's in need that they they're not able to do things for themselves. They can go by and pull some weeds for them or something. You know, uh, uh, you know, just go by and ride by and check see if they need anything. You know what I'm saying? We have to give of ourselves in that sense because we're trying to put stuff in our account, our own account, not someone else's account. So. Um, I am saying that so we can understand, um, I mean, you can understand what I'm saying, but at the same time, um, you get where I'm going. So, he said, if you don't have cherries, I am nothing. He says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profit nothing. They go with the nothing again. Nothing. This is Paul. This is Paul talking, not me talking. He said, "Profit nothing, nothing." You know. So uh, these are just things I think about. I, you know, I don't know if you think about them. I'm just presenting these things, these thoughts, as I go through. And look at, um, I believe the chapter. I think it's Matthew. Look at Matthew ten. I think it is. Um. Yeah, Matthew 10. Look at Matthew 10, 32. We're going to go back to, we're going to go back over here and finish reading in Galatians, where we at. I'm going to have to mark the page. I might forget, but we're going to go back. Galatians 10. Galatians just we just turned from Galatians, I think we went. No, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 13. That's where we're going back first. 13, yeah. And make sure we go back there. I marked that page. So Matthew 10, 32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. That's not the point I want to make, but I read that to say, to go to the next point. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth, I came not to send peace, but a sword. I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be them of his own house. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Verse 38. Now I'm saying that because these are things that you have to break and go do some things. You know, sometimes you have, might have to go do your charity and get away from family for a minute. Family may be wanting want to go eat, go to a picnic or something. You may have to, well, let me, let me go do this first. So let's stop out here and do this first and then we can go. And if somebody might not want to go by them, family might cause a little tension, strife. Might not want to stop. We ain't got time. Let's just go. We got to go. No, we, let's go do that. Then we're gonna have fun when we get there. I'm just saying. This is just one instance. He says it may cause tension because you're trying to do God's will along the way in your life. Well, I'll tell you what. Better yet, I'll just meet you there. I'll just go do it. Yeah, we'll we'll meet there. Whatever the case might be, you know. Or I just can't make the dinner. I'm going to go over here and minister so-and-so. You know. Those things. These things. And he that take it. Verse 38. And he that take it not his cross and follow me and follow after me is not worthy of me. We all try to bear our cross. We all trying to put into our, our account. We all trying to deposit into our account. Amen. And I'm not trying to deposit. I'm not trying to deposit in your account. But if you're with me, uh, if I'm with you, and we are together, then you're okay and like, sanctioning me to go do these things, and you're putting your account is being put in too. You see, you know, so you don't have to you don't have to actually do do what I'm doing or, or what you I don't have to do what you're doing. But if I'm sanctioning, saying okay, baby, that's good, go do that, and it's going into my account too. Well, I'm not saying you ain't finna go nowhere and do nothing. No, they sure ain't going to my account, and you go do it anyway. That's funk, that, that the tension right there in the relationship. You got to go do it. You got to go do it. You got to get done. Faith without works is dead. 
It was just dead. He said, uh, see, verse 39, he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his, loses life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth, he that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet, now the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man's, righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give, whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little, these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So, you know, there's work to be done. There's work on the way to rejoicing and having a good time and fun. It's not, it's not a dread. It's easy. It's easy to do. Um, some of us, some of us, are not capable to do things when we get older. You know, my back, I have to pop my back all the time. So I know that I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little older. You know, uh, to do things. So hopefully somebody will say, "Oh, brother Henson, you got old." You know, he can't do certain things. Let me go by there and check on him. Mm -hmm. Sister Henson, she can't do it either. And they both sitting in the rocking chair. They barely can't move. Let's go by there and check on them. See how they're doing. Mm -hmm. I love to see somebody, you know, I'm getting old. And I'm not able to do something. So somebody would love to see you too as well. So, um, uh, we're still at verse, verse, verse 13. Let's see. So charity, verse number four says, charity suffereth long in its kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself and is not puffed up. Not puffed up. Look at Matthew 6. Look at Matthew 6. Somebody going to do the charity. They're going to they gonna come out. They're going to say, man, I, I mean, I did this for so-and-so. I did this for so-and-so. And that for so-and-so. Tooting their horn. Boo, boo, boo. You see people on YouTube all the time giving stuff away, you know, doing things for others. Why you got to put it on YouTube, man? What are you just going to do? I'm getting numbers. I'm getting the numbers, man. I want to get a million, I want to get a million views, 10 million views right quick. Look at the Bible says in, in, in Matthew 6. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your father which is in heaven. He said, therefore, when you do it, thy arms do not sound a trumpet before them in as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men verily I say unto you they have their reward they already received their reward they got the views they got the money they got the cars they got the Lambo they got the Porsche they got the Ferrari let me tell you something man you know you got the Lambo and you got the Porsche you got the Ferrari if you got a trunk or something, you can, so you can put something in the back of it so you can take something to somebody or help somebody with something. You might have to take, you know, I might have to go to somebody's house and barbecue. You got, you got room to put the barbecue pit back there, go barbecue. You got room enough to put that, your, your, all your equipment there, you can go find some fish for, some fish for somebody. I say fish, man. My wife can cook some fish. I got to give it to her. I tell you. So, you know, that's a, that's a gift. Man. You know what I'm saying? If I was old, or if I was unable and had no hands, and that sister brought me some fish, boy, I'm gonna finally figure out how to eat it. Thank you, sis. Just leave it here. I'll get it. I'll get it down. I get some fake hands and eat that. I'm just saying. But it's the thought that that person brought you, you know, brought you, brought you something, you know, and helped you. Boom. Ching ching in your account. Ching ching. You ain't gotta tell nobody. You ain't gotta get no group. Brother, we finna go. Hey, brothers, uh, we finna get together Saturday. We're gonna go. Now just go do it. Right, everybody working, doing stuff. Um, let me just drop this brother, brother, brother Johnson talked about the fellowship. That was a good thought for brother Craig to say go to uh, go to Corkscrew Barbecue. I'm giving him a plug right now, but that's not the place to go on a Saturday because they are booked to the hill, you know. And then it's in Old Town Spring, and at the same time in Old Town Spring, they got it fixed up where you can't park anywhere. You, you can't park in that parking lot. Where, where the place you going? No parking on the streets. They will come get your car. 
You got to park there. If you can't park there, you just got to ride around circle somebody leave. And they got a line all upside that place. And they're going to close it too because they're going to run out of barbecue every time. Good thought. I went by there. I couldn't get in. I just rolled around. And look. Nobody moved. I know these, I know one about it there because it, it, it wasn't going to happen. See, my brother, brother got, somebody got a hand up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so good thought on having a fellowship. But um, um, we're going to do it somewhere else next time. Well, have you? Uh, good thought. teaching this morning. Uh, good teaching, my brother. I just wanted to read, uh, you know, Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter number 5 or 16. Where Matthew five sixteen says, actually verse fourteen, uh, you are the light of the world. A city that is hid on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do light do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And so the difference between that and verse Matthew 6, 1, what you read is, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. So in the Matthew 5, uh, verse 16, is saying your light to be seen. Mm. But in six, Matthew 6, 1, it says, don't do your alms before men so that he, so it be not seen. So that's the part that's hidden. Alms... And if you look at the word up in the Greek, it's defined as um, a benefits, a benefits or a benefaction, alms, deed uh, to the poor, like some money that you give to the poor. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the type of thing that you do in secret uh, and your father rewards you. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to uh, your light, your light is to be seen of mm -hmm. all men, um, you know, when it comes to the works that are in your life, your mm -hmm. speech your ways, you know, that they match Christ's ways. Uh, that's what is to be seen. So that's the difference between, you know, that part be hidden to the poor and then your worst, the, the light in the light that you shine to be seen before men. Uh, so th what this shows is just the character of Christ, mm -hmm. how he wants us to move about this world, uh, what to show, what not to show, you know, and this is what pleases him, you know. So. I mean, totally agree, bro. Totally agree. Okay. Amen. Thank you for breaking that part down, bro, so we understand, you know. Um, it's clear, though, you know, that, you know, what we want to do is we don't want to boast about things that we do, you know, uh, when we're doing for, for others. We want them to know that it's done. Now, you know what's going to be glorified when somebody else tells somebody else that you did that and you didn't tell them. You didn't, tell them. You didn't do it. They said, well, I didn't know that brother did that. All these years, I didn't. You know, so that's, you know, that's the part that's glorifying God. As a Christian, you're working behind the scenes, doing what you're supposed to be doing. And at the same time, you're not supposed to, but somebody else saying, that brother did this for me, and I died. And before I died, he did this for me, or whatever. Whatever you can stand and say. And that, you know, you never said no. Don't tell anybody. But anyway, thank you, brother, for that uh, comment. Now, where was I? Um, I should be Matthew 6 again. I mean, um. Matthew 6. I think I stopped there before we finished. We were going to go back there. So, we're Matthew 6. Can I give you a good example? No, go ahead. Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, Absolutely. I was uh, working uh, when I was teaching. I had, um, I had a, a colleague that was, she always came in and asked me that I want lunch. And I, I would bring my lunch. I said, well, you know. If you want to bring me something, you feel like you want to bring me something, you mm -hmm. could, you know. And then she went around, and so she did that a couple of times, I guess. And then she went around and told everyone that she would bring my lunch and she wouldn't, you know, do whatever. And the lady just told me, she said, she said that's not like you. I couldn't see that in you. Mm. I, but I, then I had to toot my own horn just mm. because she said that. I said, did she tell you I let her take over the notes on the car, extra car I had? And she closed her mouth, so she couldn't, you know, um, but this really truly happened. So that's what mm. people, you know, they're not so lie on you, so sometimes you got to correct them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. They did, it, they, did it to, they did it to Christ. They lied on him. That's why they hung him, that's why they hung him up. He didn't sin. There was no sin found in him. They hung him up. 
Today, what they call it is council culture. Council culture. Say what's true, you're going to get counseled. That's it. That, that's the same thing it did. That's the same thing it did to Christ. You're going to get counseled. Be a Christian today, you're going to get counseled. You're gonna, a real Christian, not the, not the fake one. Doing God's will. Somebody ain't going to like it. You're going to lose. You're going to threaten you to lose your job or something because you told somebody the truth across the hall that needed to hear it. That's just the way it is. It's going to always be that way. So, um, let us finish over here. I want to go back to 1 Corinthians. I want to go back to 1 Corinthians right here. I think that reward openly. Oh, no, we're going we're gonna to finish reading this right here because it was just was juicy for the, for the thoughts that we had. Javier, I think Javier said, I think Javier we, we talked about verse number four, that the arms, uh, Matthew 6 and 4, that the arms may be in secret, and the Father would see it in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So the openly part, I think, is what I just mentioned, that somebody else is going to tell us about what somebody else did after death. They never told nobody that they were doing something. Maybe they were paying somebody's house note. Maybe they were paying somebody's car note and they died. Nobody ever knew it but the person who got who received it. And they told them about their death. Y'all didn't know their brother paid my car note. You know, so I'm saying, verse number five says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now we pray, but we're not trying to get a reward for praying. You know, I, if I'm at a function, I'm the last one I want somebody to call me before prayer. Yeah, I want to call him. But they call you for prayer, you got to pray. You're not, trying to be, you're not trying to be glorified. But some people want to pray because it gives them the look of I'm somebody. Wrong the wrong reason. Why do people want to have power and be preachers because they're preacher and boast? about I gotta go preach I gotta go preach I'm the preacher I'm the preacher I preach at I preach at Avenue B uh, 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 Zion uh, Zion Church of Christ why <laughs> why who boasting we're boasting and so so no I'm the last person you want because you know I don't know sometimes I don't want to hear my own voice and uh, but anyway um, verse 6 I'm sorry verse 6 I'm gonna put some in my mouth yeah, I'm sorry Verse 6 says, But thou which, but thou when thou prayest, enter into the, thy closet. And when thou hast shut, let me see, shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father, see it in secret, shall report, reward thee openly. In secret is when you close your eyes and you're praying. They, you know, I, I, I'm amazed back in the day. That they took prayer out of schools. Who's going to stop you from praying in your mind? That's right. Mm -hmm. you took, well, we're taking prayer out of school. You don't have no control of that. Have no you don't have no control of that evil law that you put in place. And no control of it at all. And I was thinking about something the other night. That, you know, men put laws in place. They, they uh, men allow you to have an abortion. You don't, you don't have nothing to do with that. You know, put a put a law in place so you can have an abortion, or you can have an abortion pill. That gives you the right to have an abortion. No, God's still gonna judge you. With That's right. You murdered somebody. You murdered somebody. You know, back in the day, there was a, there was a law back in the day when 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 a lot of black people were being hung that you could there was a law that you, if you found one you could hang him. It was a law, but a lot of white people were hung too back in the day. Yeah, I'm not gonna finish it. Finish it. He'll be black. They had a law. You found one. And a lot of people did it. And a lot of them were proud. They took pictures of hanging black people. But guess what? That's a sin. And you died in your sin. That's right. The law of God, they, they cannot make a law to supersede God's law. They make all, they make all kinds of laws. You got you to gotta understand which law. You can't break it. You know, you can't break it. You know what you can do and what you can't do according to God's law. Because man going to make all kinds of laws. He going to make all kinds. Because he, he think he is God. Exactly. He think he is God. So, let's make that plain. He said, he said, so when you pray, he said, you're going to get rewarded openly. Pray in your closet. Close the door. Close the door of your heart. Close the door of your heart. Who goes to bed at night 
and you got your wife laying on that side, and you lay on the side, you go to prayer. I ain't saying nothing wrong with that. And you just go to sleep. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for blessing us today. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you pray. <laughs> Why is it what you doing? <laughs> she might start praying too. Because <laughs> you don't want to interrupt your prayer. <laughs> but who does it? <laughs> That's funny to me. Who does it? So it makes sense what he says, you know, to pray that way. And that's the time to pray when you when y'all praying together or you're eating or y'all having a prayer, whatever the case might be. But nobody just wakes up out in the middle of the night and starts praying like that, though. <laughs> that doesn't happen. And so, say, verse 7 said, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not, be not ye therefore like unto them, for ye, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Well, we got to ask though. You know, I already know what we got need of. He said you got to ask him though. That means we got to pray. We got to pray. You got to have the lifelines. You got to have the line open. So you can't no sin because the, 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 the line will be chopped. If they're sin, evil. You praying it's gonna hit the wall. It's bouncing. It's bouncing back and forward, back in here. They say that I heard this lady say that one day her daughter called her. And the daughter was in the in, in the house, and they were both in the same house. And the daughter called her on the phone, and she was making a point about something. I was reading. I was looking at something else, and she was saying, "Do you know that call don't go directly to to me?" She said, "They gotta hit this tower." You might have to hit that towel, hit that towel, and that towel before it hit her phone. Mm -hmm. All them different places before it hit her phone. And uh, uh, I said this to say that, uh, that, you know, if you have sin, if you haven't repented of your sin, then it's just bouncing in the same room, boom. It didn't even left the roof, boom. It's just mm -hmm. bouncing around, your prayer, boom, boom, boom. Now, let somebody else who's a faith, faithful saint pray for you, and it went through. But now, we can ask the Lord to forgive us. Yes. For sin, and then he'll forgive us. That line is open. You know, that line is open. Don't go out and don't go out and commit sin against your wife, and don't tell her. That line is closed. You got to tell her first, or you got to tell your husband first. Don't go out and sleep with another man, another woman. Don't tell your wife first. Come to us. No, you got to tell them. You got to tell them. <clears throat> um, you see, you said. Uh, I think it was verse number eight. Be not ye therefore like verse number nine. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We don't have to we don't have to say that prayer. We can still say that prayer, but our prayer, whatever our prayer is, is individualized. So let us go to Matthew. Let's not be like certain people in the book of Matthew. Twenty-three. Anybody got any comments? Any comments? Uh, definitely welcome uh, to comment. I have one to, to go back and when you were talking about the kids in the class, they, they changed the uh, the prayer out of school. Mm -hmm. And then the kids, and, and then the principal will be on the intercom saying, okay, so, every, you know, be you're silent now. Mm -hmm. So at that time, you can pray. And, you know, a couple of students ask them, why can't we pray anymore? Why can't we do I say, mm -hmm. you can pray at your seat just quietly and meditate that way. Mm -hmm. So that's how, you know, you get around that, yes. what you just said. So mm -hmm. that that's true. Yeah, they, I think I think that I'm not getting I'm not getting I don't know everything, but mm -hmm. I think they got teachers and teachers are teachers have allegiance to to some either the union or to, to the parents or to the teachers. Exactly. And you know, now we're finding that that's not that's not the case. I thought they have they have they have mm -hmm. allegiance to the union. Yeah, but the union know, tell. also nobody nobody challenged that. Mm -hmm. You know, to reverse it, mm -hmm. no one challenged it. You know, so it, just like it. Just like the woman challenged it to, to take the prayer out of school, nobody ever crossed that. Nobody ever 
you know, went back and tried to say, hey, yeah, we need that. Look what's, well, look what's what happened to our youth now, mm -hmm. you know, so. Amen. I agree. Uh, the, thing, thing, the thing about challenging, if you know how to challenge something like that, and this is just sidebar information that I find out researching my own. Uh, this is this lady. She went to a school. I don't have any children in the children. I got a granddaughter. I care that she gets taught yes, right. what she's supposed to get taught. Right. I don't need to be taught how no drag queen can come in your class in your school and show you how to be a drag queen. Yes, mm -hmm. I have books that show you how to use your sexual organs with another male or female mm -hmm. in their libraries. But I say that to say this. This one lady, she had kids in school and uh, she was trying to figure out how to get uh, mass, when the mass uh, mandate, get it dropped in, in, one, in a certain school because they wanted to keep on doing it. And she's talking to one of her friends and she said, have you ever, do you know that, that person has a bond? And so uh, uh, they develop a strategy because we all, everybody has a bond. If you're, if you're a public servant, you sign, a, you sign a, a document giving an oath to serve the public. Also, you have a bond, which is millions of dollars that is issued by an insurance company. And uh, they call this thing a FOIA. And I just, I'm going to give it to you, FOIA, Freedom of Information Act. Anybody can get it. You can go ahead, if that school board member won't do it, then you get that, you target a school board member, you go and you do a FOIA on them, Freedom of Information Act. Get their oath, they should have it on, on, on file, because they have to sign an oath. You get that, and then you get their bond. And then you present them with a letter of intent, saying we're going to go after your bond if you don't change this. And believe me, that's how you get it done. And it's a website. Y'all can write it down. Bonds for the win. It's on, it's, on, it's, on a, it's on Google. Bonds for the win. And it tells you exactly how to do it. And across any spectrum in life, they have bonds and they have oaths. Police officers do it too. They stop you and, and, and mess your rights up. Name, name and badge number. Do the same thing to them, and you'll get results. Because you go after them individually. You don't have to go after the whole police, the whole school district. You're going to go after them individually because they're making a decision to go after you. You'll change the whole world. But anyway, let me, let's keep on moving. I might, we might get attacked on that one because I gave too much truth. I might give too much truth at that time. Brother Javier got a comment. Yeah, just want to read the scripture. First uh, Peter three twelve. It says, "For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that that do evil." Yes. And I was just bringing that out because, you know, when it comes to uh, prayers, you know, everybody, anybody can can yeah. pray, mm -hmm. you know, in the world. Uh, but it's also needful to. Uh, be wise when it comes to, uh, for example, indoctrination. Because some may come and try to indoctrinate your children mm -hmm. at the schools. You know, they may say mm -hmm. to the children, you know, say the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. And then they say, okay, you're saved, mm -hmm. you know, to the child. Yes. And so when it comes to the, uh, you know, we know the church is the house of God. But when it comes to how things are done in, in uh, school, uh, it's good to to you know for the children to know you know Jesus Amen. who Jesus is. Amen. But then after that comes the the other part where they may bring out their Pentecostal doctrine to the children or their Catholic doctrine. Mm -hmm. All right, now that today we're gonna pray to Mary. Amen. You know, we pray to Jesus. Amen. All right, Hail Mary, full of grace. Yes. And so now, so it's like. Yes. We as saints, we have to, that's why you have to teach the children the, the difference between, okay, this is not our false God. I mean, this is a, the true God. Yes, yes. This is his son, Jesus Christ. And then this is not the, uh, the true God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Vishnu is not. Mm -hmm. uh, Buddha is not. Um, you can't pray to Mary and show them scriptures because that, the thing is, um, the children can be indoctrinated mm -hmm. at a young age. And then their, their heart now absorbs. Well, my friend Billy, he's my best friend, he, mm -hmm. and, and he did the sinner's prayer in, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And so I don't see what's wrong with it, Mom. And so mm -hmm. now you got another fight. So it's good to, to teach them the truth so they mm -hmm. can be ready. You know, David, King David, when he was 
young, he would fought a lion and a bear. Mm-hmm. You know, and he loved God. He knew who his, who his God was. And so he knew who the enemy was. And so it's good for the children to be taught. Yeah. Um, because even though the intention may be good to, to pray in school, which is it's a good intention. Um, but at the same time, we have to also arm the children with Amen. weapons. Amen. Because then the enemy could come around, you know, snatch on like that bear, you know, or Amen. that or that lion. Amen. But uh, yeah. Brother, you ain't man no children, do you? You don't even have children. <laughs> that was some wisdom right there, brother. That was some wisdom right there. Because I mean, you know, the Bible says Deuteronomy six. They you take the kids to church. They took them. They brought them to it. They brought them to worship with them, and they said they can listen. I mean, they understand. I mean, I mean, I got grown daughters, but. They tell me stuff when they were young that I don't even remember. I was like, well, I don't remember that. And then the, the granddaughter says stuff right now that's so profound. I was like, wait, where'd she get that from? My wife would be looking at me and look at where'd she, where'd she get that from? They, they get it. It's coming. It, it's coming. It's coming right. Thank you, Brother Javier. That was, that was very so, so, so profound. And um, so we're taking all this and, we, and we're using it in the lesson, you know, but charity never fell it. And that is the lesson text. Uh, uh, we were about to go to uh, the book of uh, Matthew, twenty-third chapter, but he reminded me of Acts nineteen, when uh, Diana was in Asia and Ephesus at that time. That that it was the means by which they all made their money, worshiping, making that statue of, of, of the goddess Diana. And their wealth was their wealth came from that, and the disciples went in there preaching the gospel, and that upset. Uh, uh, I think the coppersmith, you know, he 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 made his money by producing that image, and it threatened it threatened their ability to make money. They don't have faith. They don't have faith, and so, what is it today in the world today? It's that threatens Christianity. Threatens. The, the people that are in power today it threatens what they believe is their God money, mammon it, it, money and mammon, that's what it threatens but it doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't threaten them, oh, we can have more prosperity if we all serve God. God God will not leave us or forsake us if we live right before God God will bless us beyond measure see, he, he used to get, I'm not going to say it, the city that, a city that we live in can be blessed ten times fold if it was a Christian city altogether. I'm not saying the name. So, Matthew 23. No comments. we we'll move on. Or we'll get ready to shut the class down. Uh, uh, then spank, back, verse 1. Then spank Jesus to the multitude and to the disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do but do not ye after their works for they say and do not so we've got to be very careful of saying things and telling people to do stuff that we're not going to do because God's going to call them a name here in a little bit he says for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and they lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers but all their works they do to be seen of men that they may broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments y'all see those custom made shirts that they got out now the men well they custom made they got big they got the big collars and they custom made they got like two buttons two or three buttons and they can see the stitching and and the and the uh we got the cuff links and with the big things on. You know, I'm not saying anything wrong with the shirt. I'm just saying you've seen it. It's a custom shirt. It probably costs some money. I don't know. Rob, Rob might know how much it costs. I know they probably got him at Men's Warehouse. Rob's the sharpest brother I know. I'm not saying he's in it. Rob is one of the holiest men I know. I'm just saying that, you know, those shirts, I saw those shirts and I think about this scripture right here. Now, those those some bad shirts, man. They're mesmerized with somebody talking to you and they got that shirt on. They look like they're from another planet. They're bad dudes. But I just I just said that, you know. I'm not saying nobody's doing that with the shirt. I'm just saying you've seen the shirts, you know. I might get one. You see me with it. <laughs> I'll just tell you. But I can't afford it, so it may not be soon. <laughs> so, and love 
Verse 6, and love the upper room at feast, and the chief seats in the, in the synagogues. This is like going to a, a game. It's not the same, but it's like going to a Laker game, have season, season tickets, and you're on the floor. And every time a game is played, they see you, and they see the players, but they see you sitting there. And you're on the floor. I'm not saying they, I'm just saying this is something like that. It's not, it's not that, but it's something like that. And greetings in the in the markets to be called a rabbi, to be, be called be called a man rabbi, rabbi. Be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And I, all of you are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be called ye master, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall shall be your servant. Your servant. Let's go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 13 where we started. Get ready to close up the lesson. Beautiful comments. Um, uh, we're grateful for the comments at all times. Um, 1 Corinthians 13. Oh, excuse me. All right. Verse chapter 13. Let's look at verse 5. I don't know where we stop. We're going to start at verse 5. Do it not behave itself unseemly, seek it not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. This is charity. This is charity. And we know that 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 Javier made the distinction between arms and charities. But if you use your arms, you give some of your arms away, and you give it away as charity. If you do it in a, in a sense as charity, but you know we made the distinction. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice it in truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Charity never fell it, but whether there be prophecies, and there is another point, it's going to switch gears. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Now this is the problem a lot of Christians have right here. Because they believe that miracles still exist. They believe that prophecies still exist. They believe that apostles still exist. And at some point, to the point where they break away from the faith and start something different. And you find out about somebody who used to be in the church, they started their own apostle church or something like that. Or they worship on another day now. They worship on the Sabbath. They no longer believe this faith anymore. And so it says right here that they're going to cease. At what time are they going to cease? It says first, it's, it's, the Bible says verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, he says, then that which is in part shall be done away. Look at look at James right quick. Look at James right quick. James 1. Um Look at uh, 20, 20, uh, 22. We'll read down. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholding himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. But whosoever shall look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, him being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his day, in his, in his deeds. What is the perfect law of liberty? New Testament, the Old Testament, the whole completion of the whole Bible. Perfectly done. So why would we need these particular miracles to still exist if that which is perfect is already here? We're reading our perfection right here, right now. Christ already came and did the work. We got the Bible complete. It's perfect. The Bible even tells us in Matthew 5, and I believe it's the latter part of Matthew, that perfection is in Christ. If we're in Christ, we're perfect. 
We're not per we're not perfect individuals outside of Christ, but in Christ we're perfect because why? He was a guiltless sacrifice. How can you stand before God and have any sin in you if you didn't? So if we stand, if we have perfection, if we repent of our sin, on that day we we rise up, we'll be in Christ, we'll be hid in Christ, who is perfect. Sometimes I tell people, hey, yeah, you can't be perfect. Yeah, ain't nobody perfect. Yeah, you can be perfect in Christ. Yeah, sister, you got a comment? Um, I forgot what book, chapter, verse, and you But uh, what does the scripture tell us that the um, that the scriptures good for if doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness? Second, 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 three, six, 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 that the man of God may be yeah. perfect. There you go. Thoroughly furnished. That's thoroughly furnished. Three sixteen, right on. There. So that's all we need. Yeah, well, you just you just said it. That's it. perfect. How how can you be perfect if you don't have anything to, to guide you to be perfect? I mean, when you when you go buy a car from, uh, I'm not finna, I'm not gonna get nobody credit. I'm not finna say no car dealership. You go buy a car, don't you expect it to be somewhat perfect when you go buy? Or you don't expect it? Well, that's why you sign a warranty because you know it ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. But you expect it to have some kind of perfection. You don't expect it to stop soon as you, before you even got the parking lot on the on the feeder road. You know. So, so, so the, the law is here. It's perfect. So, anyway, I'm going to finish reading uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, we're going to close, we're going to close the lesson up. It said, uh, uh, verse number 9, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spank as a child, I understood as a child, I, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. He's telling you right there. He's breaking it down right there. They put away childish things. Now we can put away this. We can put away uh, uh, no, what the apostles did. We can. We're not gonna put it away, but we're gonna we're gonna learn from it. We don't need the prophets. We don't need them anymore for us. But you know, to be here physically, we can read about them. We don't. We don't need Moses to come back. We can read about Moses. All this thing led up to Christ's coming. Christ came and died on the cross. He's gone back now. We can't reach back. We can't reach back for those things and bring them forward. We can't have a Sabbath day now. We can't go back to Jerusalem. You know, we can't do all those things anymore. We can't tithe now. That's not in the Bible. We can't tithe now. You know, uh, those things we can't have. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't uh, uh, have goats and camels and things of that nature to, to take to Jerusalem. The, t the, the temple is not even built anymore. It's gone. It's destroyed. Comment? Salvation is in Christ. Amen. We, we, look, we, we talked about the lesson earlier that they couldn't hear the gospel back then. Christ had to go to the dead. They had to go to paradise in a section of paradise where the saved were to teach them. We're going we're gonna to look at that one the next time I teach. Hopefully I get a chance in the book of Luke. So... Wasn't the law a schoolmaster? Yes, yeah. Meaning that's like two mm -hmm. salvation, mm -hmm. meaning up to Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a schoolmaster. Schoolmaster was a male that I know about in, 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 in secular history. You know, never was a female, but it could have been. I guess it could have been, but was mm -hmm. yeah, but in the Bible we're talking about we're talking about males who who took us up the law was a schoolmaster. It took us up to Christ. So we don't need schoolmasters anymore. So some people probably use them in private schools, uppity, pl uppity places, man. They have money. We don't understand that stuff. I don't. Uh, verse twelve. For now we are. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. And now about it, faith, hope, charity. These three, but. The greatest of these is charity. That's our lesson. Uh, bye.